Here's a look at using general MIDI in Reaper. So in Reaper, of course, tracks are all the same. So I can have audio, video, or MIDI on a track, and it's the same kind of track each time. So I've just made a new track. And I have a MIDI file that I downloaded, and I'm going to drag that in. So first off, I get an option of how I want to do it. I can either see all the channels of MIDI on one track, or I can split it up and see. Uh, so here's all the channels of MIDI on one track, or here's uh, each channel of MIDI on its own track. So to keep it simple, I'm going to choose to see all the channels of MIDI on one track, just for now. And if I open my mixer, I can go ahead and insert an effect. I can also do that by pushing this effects button here. Same thing. I can choose instrument, and if I'm on a Mac, I have the DLS music device, which is an audio unit that comes with the operating system, and it gives me access to general MIDI sounds. There's nothing really to do on this page. Uh, I can't really change the settings of the synth by hand the way I would expect to. What this is doing is the MIDI file is telling it which instrument sounds to use for each channel. So let's take a listen. Singer is played by a saxophone sound. So general MIDI. It doesn't sound great, but is a really good way for sketching ideas out. Uh, and let's take a look at how this works. So if I right click, I can open this in the built-in MIDI editor. And the MIDI editor is a little window that looks like this. For you, it might show up in the dock. You can push this button to put it in the dock, and then it'll actually just be part of your Reaper window or you can push this button here and have it as a floating window. So just like with audio, you can zoom in, you can edit. And I want to draw your attention to the bottom half of this window. So there's this divider here. If I slide this up and I move to Bank Program Select, this is the area where the MIDI information uh, that pertains to instrument sounds lives. So for instance, in the corner here, I can look at cha channels one at a time. So some channels might not have anything on it. If you download a MIDI file from the internet, it might not necessarily have all 16 channels being used. And it's just a process of trial and error, figuring out uh, which channel they put which instrument on. One thing that'll always be true is channel 10 is going to be the drums. So here, if I zoom in, this is obviously some drum programming. here. Channel 10 is always drums, that's important to remember. But other channels are other things. So if I move to channel 14, here I see in bank program select there's this little green arrow and it says alto sax. So that says that for channel 14, the MIDI information on that channel is going to be played by an alto sax sound. If I double click that, I can see that here I am on MIDI channel 14. And if I move up to the general MIDI bank, I can see that they've chosen the alto sax sound here. So I can go and change that to something else. I can change it to an oboe. So if I push OK, and I zoom out, here's where the vocal line starts. So I'm going to back up a little bit, and let's hear what our vocals sound like with an oboe sound. So let's, that didn't take apparently. So I push oboe, I push OK. Now I see that that changes to oboe. I'm going to zoom in here. There we go. And I can just go through all the channels and see what everything is. So channel 13 is a fretless bass. If I look down here, Ah, fretless bass, they seem to have some high notes just at the very end. 
Let's try and find the main bass sound. It's on channel 2 in this particular file. So if I zoom in, I can see here electric bass finger. So I could change that. I double click on this little green arrow here. I move up to general MIDI. And I can see they've chosen the electric bass sound. I'm going to keep the channel the same because I want this uh, this MIDI info is on channel 2, so I want to change the instrument for channel 2. And I'm going to change that from an electric bass to hmm, a church organ. There we go. This is probably going to sound terrible. And for some reason it didn't want to do that the first time. So if I do this again... There we go. Church organ. So I can hear this church organ in there, but there's still a bass sound. I think it's because there's two channels of bass, as a matter of fact. Since that seems kind of redundant, they seem to be playing the same thing. Uh, if I actually had these on separate tracks, I could just delete the whole track. But since I'm looking at all of the media information on one track, I can just zoom out. And as long as I'm in channel 3 here, and I do Apple A, select all, I can just delete all of that information. And if I look, all my other stuff is still there. I've just deleted that duplicate track. And now here's Daft Punk with my church organ bass line. Great. So I can use the same strategy if I make my own MIDI files. So for instance, if I select a period of time and insert a new MIDI item, and I can open it up in the MIDI editor. I did that by double clicking, but I could also have right clicked and chosen built in open and built in MIDI editor. If double clicking doesn't open the editor for you, you can change that by going to Reaper, Preferences, Editing Behavior, Mouse Modifiers. And you want to look at the mouse modifiers for media items when you double click. So the default action here for MIDI, open in editor, and for audio, show media item properties. And I can choose other actions. So for instance, I could choose to set time selection to item. And that way, if I double click, my time selection is set to the item. But I actually like it the way it was. So I'm just going to double click here, get the menu, and I'm going to go back to double click, and I'm going to open an editor. So there's my MIDI, MIDI editor. Uh, I can set my grid to be different kinds of notes, and if I have snapping on, then I can go ahead and draw notes that are going to be exactly that length. I can push scale down here and I can snap things to stay in a particular key. So for instance, the key of C major, it'll only let me draw notes that are going to be in C major. So if I wanted to stay in one key reliably, I could do that. So here, I've made some MIDI information. I'm going to trim this and zoom in. Great. And I'm going to bring up the sound on the master track a little bit. So by default, I'm going to get a piano sound. And if I wanted to change the sound, I could do exactly the same thing that I was just doing in the MIDI file. So I could go to Program, Bank Select. I could double click, go to General MIDI, and I could choose Marimba for Channel 1, push OK. And now here, I've got my little green marker here. It's labeled marimba. And if I back up, now I've got a marimba sound. Now I can go to channel 2, 
I can see channel 2 is blank. So I filled in some MIDI information for channel 2. And as long as I'm in bank program select, I can double click, go to general MIDI, and I'm going to choose uh, Tango Accordion for MIDI channel 2. I push OK. Now I get Tango Accordion. So channel 1 has a marimba, channel 2 has an accordion. If I, I can look at both channels at the same time and hear them with their respective sounds. Ta-da! Now, I could also work with MIDI in more of a multi-track fashion. So if I get rid of that, I can drag in my MIDI file. And I can choose single channel items on multiple tracks. And now look at what's happened. I can make my tracks a little shorter. And instead of seeing all my MIDI information in one track, it's all split up for me. And I can go through and see that actually some of these tracks are empty. So there's no information here or here. Or here. And the last two seem to be empty as well, so I can just go ahead and delete all of those. Now I'm left only with tracks that have MIDI information on them from the original file that I imported. So the problem with this is if I open my mixer, I need to put the DLS music device on each track. So that's not a problem. I'm just going to put it on one and then I can double click and drag over or click and drag however you have it set up on your own computer. And now if I push play, see that I've got MIDI information happening on each track. I can go through and rename these. And I can solo things too. So this is obviously the drums. This is guitar. Piano. Organ. That's bass, and that's also a bass. They have two channels of bass. Now everything is properly named. These things I haven't named yet because uh, I didn't have a chance to listen to them. Let's skip ahead. So this sounds like slap bass, maybe? I'll just say high sound for that. And down here on channel 14, I think we've got our vocals. The vocals, of course, are, have to be played by some kind of MIDI sound, so they chose alto saxophone. And if I double click that, lo and behold, I can drag up this bottom thing, go to bank program select, and see, yep, there's my alto saxophone. It's still on channel 14, because that's what it was in the original MIDI file. So I'm going to keep it there, and I'm just going to choose maybe trumpet instead of alto saxophone. So when I see the name change, I know that's how I know that that worked. And there I have a different sound. So I can go ahead and record my own MIDI, or draw it by hand. Uh, and I can use bank program select and the DLS music device up here in combination in order to get access to general MIDI sounds. <laughs>